Uh, my name is Dawn Adamson. I'm a consultant cardiologist at the University Hospital of Coventry in Warwickshire. Um, I'm actually an interventional cardiologist, um, however I specialise in heart disease in pregnancy. So that's um, women who um, are pregnant or would like to be pregnant and either are thought to have or, or known to suffer from uh, any sort of heart problem. Arrhythmias are very common in pregnancy. They can actually uh, affect up to 50% of women with either some slight ectopics or just short runs of a tachycardia. Um, the problem is, is obviously if um, they present for the first time in pregnancy, which they often do, then they can be very frightening for the pregnant woman. Um, and uh, at this point normally um, women are obviously worried both about themselves but about the effect uh, that the arrhythmia might have on their baby. The majority of arrhythmias that women have are very benign, they're just the heart having little hops, skips and jumps as a result of the heart changing slightly in its structure and function so that it can support both the mother and the baby. So majority nothing to worry about but very occasionally women it's the first time that they've presented with arrhythmia and the majority we can solve quite simply with some simple medication and there are a number on the market which are baby friendly. The reason that we see more arrhythmias in pregnancy is because the natural physiological change uh, of the heart in pregnancy is to start uh, increasing its speed. Um, it stretches a little so that there's more blood to go to both mum and the baby. And that has the effect on um, uh, almost exciting the electrical pathways of the heart. So there's something called an increased ectopic potential. Uh, and what that means in simple terms is that by having these extra beats, it can set the heart into into little runs of, of tachycardia, of fast heartbeats. Um, and this is all normal physiology. Um, the majority of women who are pregnant are young and fit and therefore their heart can respond very quickly. A bit like if you were to get uh, frightened or excited, your heart might respond very easily to adrenaline. It's the same sort of idea. Thank you. Arrhythmia um, treatments are often adjusted in pregnancy uh, for a number of reasons. The most common reason is the minute a woman finds out that she's pregnant, she stops taking her medication because she's frightened of the effect uh, that it has um, uh, you know, on her unborn baby. And one thing that I try um, and um, uh, support any woman that of childbearing age that I start on medication is to give them advice so that if they do fall pregnant they know which ones they can continue and which ones they genuinely need to stop. Um, also um, during pregnancy uh, you may go to see your GP and it's a very difficult um, balance between uh, a GP knowing uh, whether or not a, a woman needs to have the medication continued uh, and the effect it's having on the fetus and so often um, the GPs might back off the medication um, just as a, as a point of safety across all medications. Um, I personally um, see a lot of women with lots of different conditions and I think it really depends on what drug they're taking and how serious the condition is. Um, if they're taking it more as a um, just to get them through the day because their arrhythmias can be uh, annoying and and uh, affecting their quality of life then it may be stopping that medication it is appropriate whereas women who need the um, medication because of life-threatening arrhythmias then it's imperative that they that they don't stop and that they seek um, uh, help from someone who who specializes in women who have heart disease or speak to their the, the doctor who commits them on the medication. The, the straight answer is, is no in the majority of cases. Um, there are a number of medications which uh, are safe uh, to give the pregnant mother, either because the amount that um, goes through to the baby is absolutely tiny and of no cons consequences, or even some medications such as, such as flecainide, for example, that is often used in young, um, young women. Uh, we actually give that to women to actually treat um, arrhythmias in the baby, uh, in the unborn baby. So um, I think it's important to ensure that the medication you're on is safe and more importantly to understand how safe because obviously women uh, do worry. We always, if we start medication in pregnancy, start off with the lowest dose and just up titrate um, as symptoms depend. But again, if you need your medication, then you know your uh, cardiologist should be able to advise you on, on what you can take that's safe for pregnancy.
the good news is AF in pregnancy is rare. Um, we very rarely see it unless it's within the context of structural heart disease. Uh, so it may be that the woman is presenting for the first time for a, so with some form of valvular heart disease such as mitral stenosis. But lone AF and the AF that we see in the general population very rarely affects um, young pregnant women. And if we do see it, then we actually um, are very um, aggressive in cardioverting them back into a normal rhythm so that they don't need the stroke prevention. In the um, time that I've been doing, I've never had to manage someone's stroke prevention for AF because I've always managed to very easily get the lady back into a normal rhythm. But should we have to, we know that clexane um, or the low molecular weight heparins, the injectable heparins, are safe in pregnancy in the fact that they do not cross the placenta to go to the baby. So they only anticoagulate the mother. The only uh, problem with that is come towards delivery. We like to try and stop them. But we often manage women who need anticoagulation through pregnancy for a number of other more common reasons such as uh, mechanical valves or they've had um, thromboses such as a pulmonary embolism or deep vein thrombosis in the past and uh, we've got quite a, a structured way of doing that. Uh, the best thing for me is the, um, the fact that I've been invited to speak on arrhythmias in pregnancy, which is something I'm quite passionate about. And also, you know, I know that there's a lot of electrophysiologists out there that do an, an awful lot of um, excellent work and very complicated work, but may not be quite so au fait with this very specialist sort of niche area of looking after the pregnant woman. So to have the opportunity to try and share what I've learned is fantastic.